Hello again, and this is the final example of exponents in fractions uh, that I'm going to do. Now, I teach my students to use a green, an orange, and a red highlighter when they start their exam. And if they don't, uh, if they know they know how to do a certain question, highlight it in uh, in green. If you know you don't you don't know at all how to do this question you highlight it in red and if you're not really sure you think you might have an idea highlight it in orange and and then you start with the green questions then you do the orange questions and finally you do the red questions so that if you run out of time at least you run out of time on the questions that you were anyway had no idea how to do and you could spend as much time as you wanted uh, as you had uh, trying to figure it out now this is a typical question that I find students highlights in red. Uh, they just give one look at it and one problem is the massive exponents. The other problem is all of a sudden there's square roots all over the place. So uh, they don't even begin to think how to solve this. Um, but I've got good news. It's no different than just what we've done so far. So my, here's my suggestion. Okay, obviously, first of all, the square roots are not useful in this case. So what we'll need to do is divide the exponent with our square root. Okay, so f in the numerator, we uh, remember a square root actually means I divide my exponent with whatever the power of the radical. This is called the radical. That's called the sorry, the degree of the radical. We'll divide three three thousand and eleven with 2. Now this makes it even worse because now it's not even an even number that's being divided. Look, all of these are odd and and I'll confess those are done so deliberately okay, to make it a little bit more tricky. So now we've got 3009 divided by 2 minus 2 to the power of 3005 divided by 2 okay well the first step after we've done that now now we at least have base exponent things um, we want to prime the bases if they were different but they're all the same so so that at least should should comfort you the second thing is we want common powers be uh, like a base and, and a common exponent and my suggestion was right in the beginning was choose the smallest exponent choose smallest exponent now don't don't worry that they are fractions just choose the smallest of the fractions and it still has to do with the exponent they've got the same denominator sorry the numerator they've got the same denominators so the smallest numerator will tell me which is okay so the smallest one of the lot will be this one 3005 over 2 3009 over 2 and 3011 over 2. Obviously the smallest exponent would be this one. So how do I write 2 to the power of 3011? I want to be 2 to the power of 3000 and 5 over 2. But now obviously I need to add something because I want 2 to the power 3011. That's what it originally was. So um, I, I notice okay I'll have to add 6 to the numerator and to add to the numerator I need the same denominator so I need a 2 as a denominator so 3 to the uh, 2 to the power 3011 over 2 is the same as 2 to the power 3005 over 2 plus 6 over 2 okay in the denominator this one as well I see to get 2009 sorry 3009 I have to take 3005 over 2 plus 4 over 2 and then this one I can just leave as it is 2 to the power of 3005 over 2 there we go okay now let's apply this rule that we have right here that since we're adding the exponents we may we may just break it up into two bases and to do that I'm going to make this 2 to the power of 3005 over 2 okay times 2 to the power of 6 over 2 but 6 over 2 is just 3 so just simplify it why not okay 
2 to the power of 3 divided by, here we've got 2 to the power of 2005 over 2 times 2 to the power of 4 over 2. 4 over 2 is just 2. Plus, and then this one was just itself, 3005 over 2. Now, why did we do this again? Well, because we want to factorize. We want this common powers so we can take it out as a common factor. The reason why we needed to take out a common factor, and this is not a positive, it's a negative, I apologize. The reason why we wanted a common factor is because we have two terms in the denominator. The numerator is fine, we've got one term, but in the denominator we've got two terms, so we can't just apply our exponential rules over the whole expression. We first need to have single um, terms in the numerator and denominator, and to do that we factorize. I'm going to say that a lot, so get used to it. So in the denominator we see we can take this out as a common factor, 2 to the power of 3005, that should be a 3, okay. So in the numerator we've got 2 to the power of 3005 over 2 times 2 to the power of 3 divided by 2 to the power of 3005 over 2 that I'm taking out as a common factor from both of these terms. Here I'm left with 2 to the power of 2 which is 4 and here I'm left with minus and here I've taken away everything except of course there's still a 1 factor so minus 1 which leaves me now with these two that can cancel because they are common factors. Actually, I'm subtracting the exponents and getting 0 and 2 to the power of 0 is 1, which I then don't need to write. Here, I've got 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. And in the non denominator, I've just got this 4 minus 1 left, which is 3. And isn't that beautiful? If I had to round off to the nearest or find the nearest integer approximation, this would be answer would be 3 because 3 can almost divide 3 times into 9 and this is 8 so it, it's almost getting to 3. That, that's one way of reasoning at it. Or just use your calculator. 8 divided by 3 gets 2,666666 and that is closer to 3 than it is to 2. Cool! I think uh, I'll leave this here. As you can see it started out a very difficult problem but just um, just approaching it in a simple way actually had a very simple solution. I love maths and that it's like that. Cool. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next topic. Cheers.